This is the first 4.2B video. We're gonna look at what's called a completely randomized design for an experiment. In the previous videos, we talked about how to randomly assign treatments using slips of paper technology and uh, the table of random digits. Today, we're gonna to focus more on the completely randomized design. And this design is a design in which all the experimental units are assigned to treatments completely by chance. So we'll see it's similar to taking a simple random sample and, and we've already done it in the previous videos. A control group is just a new term and it's, it's ex an experimental group whose primary purpose is to provide a baseline for comparing the effects of other treatments. So basically the control group, in some instances, they won't receive any treatment at all or they'll be given a placebo and more on a placebo later in this video. So when we're drawing what a completely randomized design looks like, we have our experimental units. We need to label that they're randomly assigned to the first treatment or the second treatment. And then in the end, we're going to compare because we need to remember the four principles of experimental design. So let's take a look at an example here. We have um, many utility companies have introduced programs to encourage energy conservation among their customers. An electric company considers placing small digital displays in households to show current electricity use and what the cost would be if this continued for a month. Will the displays reduce electricity use? One cheaper approach is to give customers a chart and information about monitoring their electricity use from their outside meter. Would this method work almost as well? The company decides to conduct an experiment to compare these two approaches, the display versus the chart, with a group of customers who receive information about energy consumption, but no help in monitoring the electricity use. Describe a completely randomized design involving 60 single family residences in the same city whose owners are willing to participate in such an experiment. Write a few sentences explaining how you would implement your design. So we want to, we want to compare the display versus the chart and also with the group who receive um, just information about their um, energy use and they're not getting any help. So there's no chart, no display. This is going to be our control group. So we're going to make this design using this information here. So our experimental units are going to be the 60 households. So the first step, take our 60 single family households and randomly assign them to the three treatments that we discussed, the display, the chart, and the control. Now from here, we need to talk about what we're going to measure. The response variable that they're measuring is the amount of electricity used. So here we'll talk about what we're going to measure and then we're going to compare the results in the end. So this is essentially the display uh, or the, the visual of the experiment. And just one thing about the control group is the reason we have to have the control group is to provide a baseline to compare the chart and the display treatments against. If we didn't have the control group, we wouldn't be able to tell whether the homes with digital displays or charts use less electricity than homes that didn't have the aids like this. So the control group gives us more uh, information about the treatments. Um, but this, this problem is not complete because they've asked us they've asked us to write a few sentences explaining it. And if they ask us to describe the experiment, then we're always gonna to have to actually write out uh, the important parts of this experiment. If you want full credit, then you can't just draw a diagram. You're expected to describe how the treatments are assigned and state what will be measured and compared. So we've learned how to randomly assign them. We're just gonna write it out here in this space provided. Okay, so there we are, just like in the previous videos, we're going to assign a number to each house between one and 60. We'll write those numbers on identical slips of paper, put them in a hat, mix them up, draw out 20. Those first 
20 corresponding houses, get displays, shake it up, draw 20 more. Those houses are assigned to a chart and then the remaining 20 are given information but they have no way of monitoring their usage. And finally, at the end, we will compare these three groups and how much electricity was used. So you can see the comparison at the end, we need to make sure we're saying what the response variable being measured is and how we've assigned the households randomly to the different treatments. The next objective is to be able to describe the placebo effect and the purpose of blinding in an experiment. So good experiments, they pay close attention to detail and ensure that all subjects are treated identically. That's that concept of control. And one way we have to do that is by using a placebo. A placebo is just a fake treatment or an inactive treatment. The placebo effect describes the fact that some subjects respond favorably to any treatment, even an inactive one. For instance, the mind is an amazing thing. And if you believe that you are taking a treatment that is healing whatever issue you're having, then your body will actually, can actually begin to start healing itself. So um, what, we, what we do is we implement uh, blind treatments or we implement blindness to help take into account this placebo effect. So a double blind experiment is an experiment where neither the subjects nor the people who interact with them know which treatment is being received. So um, let's take a look at an example and see if we can uh, dive into some more. So an interesting experiment, researchers examined the effect of ultrasound on birth weight. Pregnant women participating in the study were randomly assigned to one of the two groups. The first group of women received an ultrasound, the second group did not. When the subject's babies were born, their birth weights were recorded. The women who received the ultrasound had heavier babies. So the reason they're talking about the weights of the babies is because they use weight to determine the health of the baby. So heavier babies tend to be healthier. So did this experiment uh, take, into the, take into account the placebo effect? And in this case, it did not take into account the placebo effect because all of the mothers knew whether they were receiving an ultrasound or not. So uh, we don't know if them knowing that they were receiving had, a, had an influence on the response, which in this case would have been the weight of their babies. So no, it didn't take into the account the placebo effect because the women knew that they were having ultrasounds or they knew that they were not. And so the people that knew they were having ultrasounds, maybe um, they reacted differently and maybe seeing the image of the child encouraged them to eat healthier and so they had healthier babies. Only way it could have taken into account this placebo effect is if people thought, some of the mothers thought they were receiving an ultrasound. So was this experiment double blind? And in this case, no, it was not double blind because the experimenters knew if they were giving an ultrasound and the women also knew if they were receiving an, an ultrasound. So based on your answers to question one and two, describe an improved design for the experiment. So based off of one and two, what they're wanting us to do is implement uh, some type of design that accounts for potential placebo effect. And the only way we can do that is if we make it a double blind uh, experiment. So what we would have to do is have all the mothers be treated as if they were having an ultrasound, but for some of the mothers, the machine's not turned on. So they think they're getting an ultrasound, but in reality, they're not. And uh, in order for this to work, the monitor would have to be turned away so that the mothers couldn't see whether they were or were not receiving the ultrasound. That way we'll know it's the only difference was if they received the ultrasound or if they did not. 